thank you guys for coming. Um, for sure. As people kind of file in, um, I. Where do we begin? Someone, I don't care. Where are you from? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Planet Earth. Uh, you guys are. You guys are. That's a good question, Brittany. You guys are muted, but. Um, um, you can you can pose questions in the Q and A um, channel um, throughout. Uh, we we called the, um, some questions from Instagram earlier uh, to earlier this week, um, and then at the end, if everyone wants to say hi, we can I can sort of go through one by one and unmute everybody. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's great. So I I think we can get started. Um, we have like you know, a, a few people in here. But um, hey guys, thank you guys for coming. Um, we're honored to have you here. Um, we really appreciate your time and effort um, in volunteering for our panel for Rise Up Animation. Um, and so, you know, we sort of hold these panels to sort of, you know, open up communication um, between industry professionals and people that are um, up and coming artists that are trying to break into the industry or just kind of anybody really. I mean, it's, that's the main focus, but it's, it's really for anybody that wants to uh, sort of, you know, um, have a conversation about, you know, um, you know, people of color um, experiences in animation and, and, you know, all of that kind of stuff and everything that entails. So um, I guess I just kind of wanted to start out with um, um, welcoming you guys. Thank you guys for coming. And uh, maybe we can kind of go around um, and, and introduce ourselves um, and your job title and a little bit about what you've worked on, a little bit of your history. Uh, so Kim Zinn, do you, do you, wanna, do you wanna kick it off? Sure, sure. Um, hey, everybody, I'm uh, Kingston Albert. Great to be here. Uh, just first off, I really want to thank Rise of Animation because you guys are like really doing something that I feel is necessary in our industry, and I love the way you guys are doing it. Um, but anyway, I'm from uh, born and raised in New York. Uh, basically, um, all my life started, uh, went to NYU film school, uh, to School of the Arts for film and then really um but really for animation and this is before they had an animation degree really so i did my studies there and uh and then you know came out and hit the pavement and tried to get a job in animation fresh out of school and my, my first job was on uh views and butthead back at mtv back then. oh and that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's so Where cool great beer comes from <laughs> classic material and, uh, yeah, so I mean, um, been in been in uh, been in LA for uh, four years, and uh, was brought out to work at Cartoon Network by uh, my guru uh, Ian Jones Cordy, <laughs> one of my favorite people um, on his show OKKO. So uh, nice. and then here I am. So yeah, that's awesome. Glad to be here. Right, right. Thank you. Oh, and I'm on. Uh, sorry, I'm on. Uh, I'm the supervising animation director on. Uh, Adventure Time Distant Lands. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Adventure Time Distant Lands. It's, it's the long version of Adventure Time. We just call it Adventure Time. But uh, yeah, Adventure um, Now airing on HBO Max. So there you go. Hey, oh, congrats, man. <laughs> well plug. Congrats. Well done. Well done. <laughs> uh, Michael, do you want to go next? Oh, yeah, I'll go. Uh, my name is Michael Camacho. I am the lead character designer on Summer Camp Island. And um, I've been at Cartoon Network for the past six years, and I've worked on like uh, several projects from like Clarence to Craig of the Creek, and just done freelance here and there for different studios. And yeah, I'm just excited to be here to talk to you guys about you know breaking into the animation industry. And um, thank you to Bobby and Rise Up Animation for hosting us. <laughs> How long? When did you break in? Um, it was like in 2014 when I. Oh, it was through, oh it hasn't been that yeah. long. Mm -hmm. Okay, right on, man. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Awesome. Uh, Mark? Yeah, um, Mark Davis, um, one half of the Mad Twins. My brother's Mike Davis. A lot of people know us as, as the oh Mad Twins God. together. Oh, my God. I didn't realize that. I stalked, <laughs> I, I stalked your Instagram. And I was like, oh, yeah. Why is, yeah. Why is it Mad Twins, and why are they saying they? And I thought that was just your uh, uh, 
Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I speak in days and we's because I'm a twin, so every time, Whoa. like, I always, I'm always saying we. I never say I. But yeah, my my brother's Mike Davis. He's on here. Shouts to him. Um, from Boston. Well, I'm from Cambridge, house right outside of Boston. Um, been in animation since 2000, about 2008. Um, started off uh, my first. My first studio gig was Boondocks. I was doing revisions. I was a freelance revisionist there. Um, but before that, I was doing uh, interstitials in Atlanta um, for Turner. But Cartoon Network used to have these like three second bumpers before they went to commercial. And so I started off there doing in betweens and stuff like that. So yeah. And then um, right now, I'm at Vic on Victor and Valentino at Cartoon Network. Um, storyboard supervisor. I've been there for, been there for two years. I was I was hired as a director, but then I was moved up to storyboard supervisor. So that's where I'm at now. Right on, man. That's awesome. Um, and then Christine. Hi, uh, I'm Christine Lee. Um, I'm probably the greenest of everyone here. I've been in the industry for like a little over a year now. Wow. Um, cool. Yeah, I started like right before 2019. Uh, so like maybe two years. Um, so my parents came to this country as refugees from Vietnam. And so we didn't have a lot of money growing up. Uh, so I went to a Cal State uh, school because I had no portfolio and no experience. Um, and I did a bunch of stuff there. I did a Nick Turnship and a summer program at Pixar. And I did like an animation um, jam at Cartoon Network. And then I was, I graduated and then I was unemployed for a year and a half and I got ghosted by Starbucks and it was very sad. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then I got a PA position at Nickelodeon on Shimmer and Shine. And the same week that I got my job offer, I applied to the CNS Academy, which is a storyboarding academy at Cartoon Network. And then once I got into there, that opened a lot more doors for me and I revised I did story revisions on Creek of the Creek, and now I'm on the Fungies as a story revisionist. Nice. That's awesome. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Pixar in yeah. no Um, It was a summer story program. Oh, so got it, got it, got it, got it. Simil kind, kind of, but like it was, it was only three weeks, and um, we like worked really intensively on story. Got it. What, what year was that? Uh, it was the first year they ever did it. I don't remember which year it was. I think 2016 uh, or 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just got there 2017. So I was wondering if I ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. what's, what's cool is that everybody's, um, everybody's path is so different and everybody's path happened in like a different chunk. I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, Christine, obviously you're, you know, like the, the latest chunk and, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think mine happened like early, early. Uh, so I, I, I just kind of wanted to throw it out there for you guys to quickly uh, just kind of like what, um, I, I'm always um, curious to what inspired you to get into animation in the first place. Was it a movie? Was it a, um, I don't know. The opposite of that would be, I need to pay my bills and I like to draw, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So uh, 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 kind of go around and you're organic about it. But uh, uh, Kimson, uh, we'll start. what do you think? Since I, I started in the Stone Age, you know, I'm just <laughs> no, actually, um, I, I think like most people, I was drawing a lot when I was a kid. I liked comic books. I liked, I still do, you know, um, you know, I was basically really enthralled with movies and drawing. And when I realized that you could put those two together, I was like, oh, you know, that's what I want to do. So by the time I was like eight or nine, I knew I wanted to do animation. Um, like I was, I was like really focused so young, on, man. On, on, uh, on doing it. The thing was, there was like no YouTube back then, right? So like, I you had to jump through all these hurdles and stuff. And then I think, you know, I'm the, I'm the like Star Wars wave one generation. So I saw it in the theaters, you know? So, you know, that really, is very life changing. I don't know for other people it might be another movie or something, but for us it was just like a total yeah. shift. And um, you know, it all spoke to each other: comics, Star Wars, sci-fi, all these things that just kind of.
kind of melded together and I just was like, I want to tell stories. And then by the time I got to high school, um, funny enough, um, I was really influenced by independent films like Spike Lee's movies at the time. So like there was kind of like this independent black voice that was going on and I was like, oh, I kind of want to do that, but I, I want to do it with animation. And then I kind of looked up where he went to school and I was like, wait a second. That's like, I, I wasn't too far away. So I just went straight to, to, to apply to NYU. And, um, and that's where I really wanted to go. But I knew I wanted to do it from pretty young. Like, uh, I wasn't trying to be like a dentist. And actually, I, did, <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think I could make money off of animation until one of my classes, my teacher, uh, his name is John Kmaker. He's a big historian. He's got a bunch of books. Oh. And stuff. But um, one time he goes, um, he goes, oh, I'm off to, he has a house in Long Island. He's like, I'm off to the Hamptons. I have to catch the, this and that. And I was like, wait a second. Like, what teacher has a house in the Hamptons? I was like, you can make money off of, you know, I, my head was like, wait, you can actually make money off of animation? Like, you know, it was just a whole different kind of uh, industry back when I was right. studying that stuff. But, right. So to answer your question, I wasn't trying to make money. I was just, I just loved it for the art. You found know? it early. You mm -hmm. found it early. That's crazy. That's awesome. That's rare too. Uh, what do you think, Mike? Oh yeah. Um, so man, I had like a long journey getting to where I'm at today. <laughs> so I like growing up, I was like, I grew up without like any parents, like bouncing around from house to house. Like went to like 13 different schools. Like grew up in seven different households. So I remember at like eight years old, I was, when I saw Toy Story, that's inspired me. I'm like, oh wow, like you're eight. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I remember I was like, wow, like they do, you could do that as a living. So I remember like we had a career day at school. I was in the ninth grade and the teacher was, I picked animation and teacher was like, oh, you know, cause they knew about like, we were in all the government programs or whatever. So she was like, you know, do you have family out there? Like that could help you or whatever. And I was like, oh, like, no, I just like, like animation. She's like, oh, maybe you could pick a different career. So I remember at that age, I like got discouraged cause it seemed so ex like exclusive to be in animation. So I stopped drawing from like 15 all the way until I turned 21 when I met my wife mm -hmm. and she kind of encouraged me to get, go back to school to do something rather than working at a tire shop my whole life. So then I went to school and I, and I took my first like art class and I was like, dang, this is cool. So I'm going to, I want to do this for a living. So I have a, I have a funny story about like my first, I, so I was looking through the classes and I was like, oh, figure drawing seems like a good thing I should learn <laughs> if I want to do animation. Mm -hmm. So we go in, my wife, like we had the class next to each other. So my wife, we see a guy walking around in a robe and I'm like, what the heck? We're like clowning on him. Like, this guy <laughs> he has no shoes on, you know, in a robe. <laughs> so he gets on the stand. I, I stand up and then he drops the robe and I look and my wife saw with their mouth open. Like, what the hell? I'm like, <laughs> so that was like, I was like, oh man, like this is figure drawing. Yeah, so, figure then, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I studied for like seven years. I went to Cal State Fullerton as well. And then I finally got an internship at Titmouse my last semester. And I remember like during the internship, like your eyes get wide, you're like, there's all these productions, you could go to all these little shindigs mm -hmm. and stuff. And I remember after the internship, I was like, man, I met so many great people, like had a good time, but I didn't really feel like I made an impact, you know, like I, like, like myself, whatever. So then when I landed an internship at Cartoon Network, I was like, all right, this is my last shot. You know, like I'm 27 years old, like, I might not get another chance to like work in the studio. So when I got that internship at Cartoon Network, I was like, I'm just going to work for this production. I'm not going to worry about other artists, other uh, shows. I'm just going to focus and give all my all to this uh, production on Clarence. So then I just kept working and working. And then luckily, you know, after that internship, a prop design position opened up and then they offered it to me to test and then I got the job. So then I mean, I've been here ever since. <laughs> That's great. Man, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. So that was like, yeah, that's my story, like getting in. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a crazy story. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mark, you're up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that story. Yeah. I, I always, I've always been, I've always been drawing since I can remember. Um, but what really sparked it was my uncle gave us, gave me and Mike. We was grounded for like a summer. I don't know what. I don't know why he was grounded, but um, he was grounded for a whole summer. And my uncle came by and gave us a box of um, of comic books. And so we was like, you know, we, we've never been into comic books like that before. So we just started going through the crates and crates and crates of comic books. 
And we was like, wow, these these are this is so dope. And so we just started tracing them, right? We traced like we traced every comic. And then uh, you know the we put the 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 window as the light box, you know, and then just traced <laughs> over it. And then after a while we started we started making our own characters off of muscle memory. So that's what sparked like getting into comics and like really drawing, like really trying to understand like drawing and stuff like that. But I think it was a Kara um, when that film came out. That's just like it's super cliche, but that's what it is for no, us. Like chat's gonna blow up with a Kira. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna blow up now. Bro, when I, when we saw that, when we because we me and Mike used to collect the books, um, mm-hmm. and and we, when we saw the animation, because we was always kind of into like the American cartoons, but like when we saw that, it was just like it was violent. It was like like it was like superpowers and everything. We just like we want to tell our stories like this. So then, you know, after a while, we just kept drawing. Like, we always use art as a hustle, too, to make money. So we used to sell T-shirts, and we used to do, like, promotional flyers. Um, then we moved to Atlanta to go to school, and um, we started doing flyers for music companies. Um, uh, Wu-Tang Clan was, like, our first, like, big, like, professional job. We did, we did a flyer for a group called Killer Army, and it was just – it was magical to see like our artwork plastered over the all over the city in Atlanta, right? You know, like how they used to do the big like um yeah those, those post poster bills yeah like the yeah. but the wheat paste ones that they put on buildings and stuff yeah and so we it was like damn I thought I was we got paid like five hundred dollars for that and we thought we was rich <laughs> <laughs> it was like damn we're we're gonna make it right so fast forward to that um I was. I was offered an um, opportunity out here in LA to, to start an independent uh, animation company with director Michael Schultz um, uh-huh. through, a mut- through a mutual friend. Um, so I was doing that for about, since, for about like two years. And then when the company ran out of money, we developed a comic book called uh, Blockheads. That's where Blockheads came from. It was, um, that, that company funded the development. So, we was developing that for a few years. We made we made some graphic novels and toys and like ran the gamut on just on our own IP. So that gave us that really gave us the knowledge of of what uh, we wanted to do as far as in animation. Mm-hmm. But then you know, as doing things independently, it was a struggle and the money ran out. So I was like, I'm out here in LA, stuck. I'm about to have a baby. I was like, I need to find a way to re- make some real secure money. So um, my friend was telling me about storyboarding and I was like, I was like, damn, I could do that. And, and, um, and he told me how, how he went about it. And, Cause I didn't go to school for animation, mm. but he, he was telling me like, if you look at film and you just look at each frame and like practice, like how they go in and out of scenes and what shots they use. And he gave me like selections to books and stuff. Yep. And I just, I just studied that. I was like, I got to learn, I got to learn this because I can make, I can make a living off of this. So, um, so I was doing, I was studying that. And then one of my friends, um, Carl Jones was, he was a fan of Blockheads mm-hmm. and he, he ended up um, getting a shot on Boondocks and he was like, yo, won't you guys help us out with some revisions on, on this? And I was like, hell yeah. And so that's when I really started to um, like really focus on like animation. Mm. And I'm sure, I'm sure those revisions were shitty, but um, <laughs> like that, I was, I was getting a shot. And so I just focused on, yeah. on storyboarding. And I just like, I spent like, I really spent like, like six months just really just training myself, learning how to do this. Cause I, I did kind of feel like everybody went to school. Everyone has a leg up you know um and i was a little bit older too so that's it it was it was assuring to hear that that michael was 27 because i was right around 27 28 when when um when i got my first shot that's and i just awesome. made yeah i just made sure that shot counted you know and then from there um everything just started getting getting better you know so yeah um, <clears throat> do you do you mind really quickly mark because we i i i'm not sure if we're gonna have an uh, opportunity to follow up on this but like when you said you trained yourself like rocky uh, <laughs> with, the, uh, uh with the storyboard skills what does that mean specifically 
for for I, everyone that's listening uh, just kind of want to be a story artist do you think i um i bought a bunch of um storyboard books like the um like spirited away books i bought a bunch of um like film film books like like understanding the language reading that um the, the book shot by shot was a was a big one i'm sure a lot of people are familiar with that one and um just watching movies and then like drawing the scene like i'll take a scene and just like how we used to do with the comic books like like tracing you know what i'm saying like we, we would do that i would i would start doing that with with tv like i'll just pause it go into the next scene i'll pause it and i'll just draw it and then i just started understanding the flow you know of 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 storytelling you know that and accompanied with with the book with the books that i was reading it kind of started to make sense and i was like i was doing it too because i i was freelancing and i like i had to like know this stuff you know what i'm saying so i was just like i'm just gonna really like take the time out and just like and just really 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 focus on it and I cried some nights. I'm not gonna lie. I'm man enough to mm. tell you, mm. the tears were sh- were shedding, but it was <laughs> it was hard. Yeah, it was super hard. Yeah. You know, but Especially yeah, kind of going at it by yourself. And, yeah, and like you got you have stuff riding on it too, so it's like yeah, you got extra pressure to like have to yeah have to get this. So, yeah, man. That's, that's yep. I'm not, and I'm not exaggerating about the crying part. <laughs> 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 It's so hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I'm sure Christine, you can probably relate to the crime. <laughs> <laughs> I can also kind yeah. of relate to. Um, so, um, I mean, honestly, yeah, Mark, that's great. Um, I, I, I spent many nights crying over the frustration. But uh, Christine, if you're a board, if you're a board artist, I'm pretty sure you had some, <laughs> some crying <laughs> nights. <laughs> For sure. Um, and um, Christine, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess in terms of like influences, um, I read a lot as a kid because um, my parents didn't really have the time or money to like take us to movies, and they didn't really understand like to like a whole two hour like English speaking movie. And so I grew up mostly on television and like books. And so, like, um, I watched a lot of, like, Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network and Disney Channel, like, growing up as a kid. And I read, like, every series of, like, um, the series of Fortune Events and, like, even uh, the Harry Potter series and, like, the uh, Twilight series even. Like, you know, some I regret, but, you know, it really influenced me growing up uh, in terms of, like, wanting to be a person to tell story. Um, and I think like drawing has always been innate in me and like speaking of like you know running your own business as a kid like um, I was kind of like an eight-year-old con artist (laughs) and don't tell Nickelodeon (laughs) but like I would take I would take the Spongebob coloring books and I made my own light box out of uh, Tupperware and a lamp and I would trace over the pages and I knew kids would have two dollars as lunch money back in the day and so I would charge two dollars per drawing, but <laughs> yeah. But then, like, um, so so I always kind of had this intuition that like art can produce like joy in people, but also be like a sustainable thing. Um, and I never took any art classes growing up. I think it was just like a waste of time to my parents, just because uh, you know I was supposed to be a doctor or an engineer growing up. Um, So I think it came as a shock to them when I finished high school and I really wanted to pursue art. Um, And I like braced myself for a really hard conversation. And my mom like sat me down in the, or we, she drove me home from school and she like asked me what I wanted to major in. And I like knew the question was coming and I told her and she asked me why. It's just like very quiet. And I kind of just told her like, you know, it's something that I have a passion for. I want to like create stories and I want to like bring people into those worlds and like, you know, do it all visually. And her response actually really shocked me. And she was just like, well, you know, I came to this country for opportunity and she has a middle school education. 
And so she was like, you know, if that's what you want to do, that's the whole point of having opportunity. And she was like, if I can help you with that and actually like you do what you love and want to do, which she could never have imagined. Cause she, she's been working at the USPS for like 30 years now. Um, so she, she supported me and that was like a huge shock. And, you know, we didn't have that much money. And so I chose a public school to go to. And I actually found it on a forum because, you know, like a lot of information didn't exist out, out there at the time. Yeah. So I went to Cal State Fullerton yeah. and it's like one of the, I think personally, like it was such a great experience. I met my girlfriend there and um, like, I, I look back on it with a lot of like, um, like, like fondness. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, and then there was the year of unemployment where my mom was like, uh, maybe you should go back to school. Oh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there was the initial support and then the like, all right. Then the reality. reality yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm curious with, uh, you know, cause that, that's a beautiful story. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, with, with, with this, uh, with this um, path, you know, it's, 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 you know, not not everyone sees that it can be lucrative, or it, you know, you can you can make a life out of it. And I'm curious what um, what kind of support systems did you guys have getting started? I mean, you mentioned your mom, but like, was anyone in the industry or anyone that like like really shepherded you um, as you as you were getting in to kind of you know bring you to, to to where you are now? Like, who who were those people for you, and how did you oh, yeah. get into that? For oh, sure. Space. Um, my mom was definitely like a support, but my parents didn't understand anything I was doing. Like, I was like, I got an internship at Nick. And they're like, I have no idea who that is. Who is Nick? Um, so it was like, <laughs> like um, so I really like relied he heavily on like my teachers and they became a lot of my mentors because I could feel their like pride in what I was doing and then um my partner has been so supportive and like I don't know like what I like that year of unemployment where I would be without her because she was definitely like keep going at it you know take a part-time job if you need to like don't take a full-time job because you will end up like staying there forever and like she was like my biggest support ever yeah that's awesome um yeah Cheers. that's awesome that's great to see um and now you've made it and now you're <laughs> yeah <laughs> now you're here now you're here how, how proud <laughs> oh my god how how proud how proud your your, your mom must be like, to, sure. to see you flourish to for see sure. you know see it all happen for sure yeah. um and I'm trying to keep track of time, um, but not let it get too long. So um, I, uh, I I can ask so many questions of you guys personally. Um, I, I will ask this. Oh, I will ask this to the the panel. Um, what were some of the uh, big biggest challenges that you faced uh, trying to break in, and how did you overcome them? Um, how how did you stay motivated? How did you kind of sort of keep at it? Because you know, especially in this sort of COVID nineteen sort of uh, specifically time, I mean, everything can feel a little bit um, uh, I just kind of like why do, do why should I even try? Uh, is there any advice? or experiences that you guys had of like, you know, all that kind of like hustle and how you, how you like overcame it, you know, to break into the industry. Um, uh, Kimson, we can, we can start with you if you don't mind. Um, so I think one thing maybe you've heard from all of us or that I've heard was that everybody really wanted to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So regardless of whatever the obstacles are, like I went through, like my mom had to remortgage her house. I had people like, why don't you do this and be, you know, she was super supportive, but then there were some detractors of my family, not many, but uh, my dad was kind of like, why don't you go to a, a, you know, this is like my dream. And he's like, why don't you go to a cheaper school? You know, when I'm asking him for money. 
But um, but I was like, I'm gonna do it with or without you, you know. And then I had this plan where I was gonna go to college for like one year and then work for one year to pay for college. So the fact that I graduated in four years that was like astonishing to me because I was on an eight year plan. And uh, and um, but I think the drive is really what's important. And then the, the so spoiler alert, you know, once you're in the industry, there's still rejection. So there's a lot of rejection when you're trying to get in. And then once you're in the industry, there's there's still rejection. So you still have to have a drive. You still have to find the source of what you wanted to do it for in the first place. I think for me, it's always been trying to find how to tell a story that you know connects with you and can connect with other people. I think for some reason that has always um, pushed me um, to work like I, I find, I don't know how to explain it, but I find like small nuggets of um, proof of what I'm looking for. Like I'm almost like looking as a scientist to find proof of, oh, this story nugget's really cool over here. And and um, I know it's a little abstract what I'm saying, but it's like after I've jumped from so many different jobs, then I'm kind of like, oh, you, you can kind of see how people tell their stories and you're taking things from here and then you're polishing your own skills. Um, I think it's this drive underneath to tell stories, to find out. I know that for me is is really important. And and it's kind of a lifelong thing, you know, it's like, right. it's not something that gets old. Um, right. We do, but the drive doesn't necessarily. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think the, that that's the main thing. I think keep going. You always got to keep going, you know, yeah. always. For sure. Um. And then, uh, yeah, how, about, how about you, Michael? Because I'm oh, curious with like, with <clears throat> just, um, uh, you know, the, you, you mentioned kind of bouncing around and going, you know, different schools and all that stuff. And then, and then um, uh, you mentioned your, your, um, your girlfriend at the time or, or wife, maybe um, that, you, that helped you, helped you kind of push forward. Like, what was, um, I guess, what was that? What, what were those times like? for you and, and uh, you know, just, I guess any, any advice for anybody else being in that situation? Right. You know, uh, just kind man, of like, that like you really do need, yeah, you really do need like a support, like huge support system because like, if I had thought about doing this while that all that traumatic stuff was happening in my life, I don't know if I would have probably made it. It wasn't until like, I, I think it was like when I started not becoming a like victim of my circumstances and started taking like responsibility for like my own life and I started just like being more like you know of a like productive like human being and stuff and stop messing around <laughs> so one thing one thing I, I uh, what I do I've, the last five years I've been going back to the school that kind of like discouraged me to go into animation so I've been talking to the like junior high school out there and one thing I always tell them is like like we're in a time now where there's such a free flow of information online. You can learn anything from home. Like kids, like there's like 15 year old kids that are like drawing so well. Now it's like, they'll, they'll be like, it's like, there's so much stuff. And I'm like, just like, as long as you have the desire to do something, just like, don't think about how you're going to get there, how long it's going to take you or like, you know, or how are you going to do it? Just start doing it. Cause once you start like just working on something, things start coming to you. You start meeting people, doors start opening, like your, your dream like, kind of starts working on you as well. So it's like, that's kind of like what's like happening with me is like, I just started like meeting like random people that I would have never met if I wasn't like put it out there that like, oh, I want to be in animation. Like after that first uh, figure drawing class I took in college, man, I was horrible. I was like, oh man, I don't know if like, if, if I'm good enough for this. So I just started researching online, like how to improve your, your figure drawing. And I came across this uh, Sheldon's Art Academy, this, and it just like, the, he's, been, he's been my mentor and like still kind of like a father, father figure to today. Mm -hmm. And he like changed my life, like just, just on how to draw, just like learning how to sharpen, like, the, like think about the basics, like how to sharpen the pencil the right way, how to hold it like how to use your shoulder and like just like going back so I don't like like okay like when I was like I was like 22 years old I was like all right I need to like retrain my whole mind so then I would like I would just like throw on like motivational messages and just draw for hours so like yeah I think just the big thing is just like just like if you have the desire to want to do it just go out and do it and just like you know like thank the people that are helping you along the way like especially if you have parents yeah. what about you Mark because I, I imagine 
I imagine you and your brother probably fed off of each other a lot, right? Or, you hit it on the head, bro. Yeah. You hit it exactly on the head. Um, to this day, still every day we we build on um, on ideas, on stories we're working on, and just like motivational like speeches here and there, you know, locker room speeches. Um, so yeah, biggest support is is my bro for sure. Um, my parents were they didn't know what animation was. They didn't, you know, we're 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 in Boston, you know, it's like far, like way far removed from the entertainment industry. Um, yeah. But they were they were supportive. Uh, I think they were just happy we wasn't out as much in the street and we're home drawing a lot. Yeah. I think that they they're cool with that. But they did they bought us a, a art table um, in eighth grade. I remember that, and um, they just kind of let us do what, what we what we really wanted to do. We was always kind of focused, um, but it's Kimson and, and and Michael are right on point, man. Like. Like it's it gets really hard, and you do have to you have to keep going. It, it's it's competitive. You do get you you get a lot of no's. You get um, you get ghosted. You know, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And you you would be ghosted really is waiting. The, is the is the is the reality? It, it, it is, and you'll be checking your phone, like looking at it, like just staring at your phone, like Damn. right, right, you know? right. Yeah. But um, yeah, like ha having having a thick skin for sure in this mm -hmm. business, you, you need one because art is so personal, and it you know we we all as artists put our spirit into it, and just to yeah. get those like rejections yeah. and, and and like showing that you're not doing a good job or whatever, or like or just criticism on your art every day, you have to be able to turn that that um yeah that personal side off and know that this is a business and understand that the when when your art is being criticized it's not necessarily because of the drawing but mm -hmm. it's about it's about the show and how it fits into that format so yeah, yeah right, right. That, i think that's pretty much it and it's funny because i know um um michael the the, the figure the figure drawing artist i'm a figure drawing oh. teacher Sheldon. I went to Sheldon, I went to Sheldon's workshop. I used to go up there, and um, it was a little bit past Calabasas. And I was yeah. like, the, the same mind frame. I was like, let me like learn everything that I really need to learn. And Sheldon was amazing. I went there for like maybe four months, and this was just me spending my. I was already in the business, but I just wanted to get better, you know. And um, somebody somebody in the uh, in the questions asked about the imposter syndrome, and. I think that I think a lot of us suffer from that, and I think um, it could be a good thing because it keeps you motivated and wanting to learn more and wanting to be the best that you can be. So, like even when I was in the industry, I still went out. Yeah. Like I'm, I live in Culver City, and I drove all the way out to like I forgot what city it is, but it's past Calabasas every Saturday morning just to just to like try to get a, a leg up, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Christine? <laughs> um, uh, okay, so I guess like to reiterate what everyone's been saying, you know, like, um, I don't know, I grew up on a lot of 90s sports movies. And like, I feel like I'm like, like Mighty Ducks. Yeah, so I feel like I'm, I'm very and like, remember the Titans. So I love being the underdog. Like I love people mm. not wow. expecting yeah. anything from me and like proving them wrong, you know. And so I think like part of the motivation is like knowing your own self value of like, I am a good artist. Like, I think I can contribute a lot, but also knowing like where you can grow. So like, yeah, it's kind of a balancing act of like being full of yourself, but then not so much just yeah. so you can continue learning, you know? Yep. And so like, um, I think that's like been like always a continuous thing of like, you're constantly learning like if you think you know everything you should just retire from the industry you know because like even once you get in you're still continuing to like learn new things but um right, in right. terms of like physical things that i did like when i was lacking motivation is i started getting into zine fest and i really like doing them because it's a different world like compared to comics because it's more i guess like it has it's a little bit more political in the sense that like there's a lot of activism in zines and so i spent a lot of time like telling my own stories and like 
like kind of going into my own identity because like everyone's like like everyone's intersectional in some way you know like um I'm a first generation uh Amer American with refugee parents I'm a queer Asian American with refugee parents so it was a really good opportunity for me to like continue doing art and like continue to tell stories but like have an audience and feel like I'm doing something right and like the other thing is like people talk about networking so hard with like industry professionals but for me my peers were my biggest networking like uh like advantage I guess like the only reason why I got uh referred into Nickelodeon was was because I got the internship but also because uh someone that I was in charge of the animation club with like knew how I worked and knew like that I would be good to work with and referred me and so I think like I think everyone worries about being here and interacting with everyone in the industry. But for me, it's like, if you have one friend that could get in, like, they're not competition. It's like, we all kind of help each other and build each other up, you know? Mm -hmm. Great point. Great point. That point. So, um, not competition. One, thing, yeah. one thing that, like, I think, like, helped me out, too, was um, as much as I was working on becoming such a great artist, I was also, like, just as much as working on myself, you know, like, like like trying to build up my character and stuff like that because I feel like your portfolio or like how you get in through internships like that's going to get you in but who you are as a person will like keep you employed people want like you can turn in stuff on time or you show up on time where you know be reliable and all that so it's like when I was interning that's why I was saying like when I would do any there was a quote that said like how you do anything is how you do everything so when I would get the smallest tasks I'd be like oh this is this, you know this is like the most important job of my life I'm going to go do it because if they can't trust you with like filing paperwork how are they going to trust you, like, turning in these characters on time? And so I was like, just take every, like, job, like, especially if you're interning or anything, like, it's, like, that your life depends on it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah, man. That's important. It's important not to drop the ball, you know? Like, I remember when, I, I think it was, like, three weeks into um, Beavis, like, my, um, I saw what my supervisor was doing, I was hired as a layout cleanup, so I'm like bottom of the rung. And back in back then, we used to do layout, which was a step after the storyboard, where we would actually draw the scene of the storyboard to size to send to Korea. Um, so it was like this: it was paper, you know, pegs, the whole thing. Kind of had to have a, a an animation background, you know, a little bit. But I just remember looking at my supervisor. I'm like. You know, I'm like 22. I'm like, I could do that. You know, like that that whole thing of like, this isn't really that hard, but it's not so much if you can do it, just like what you're saying, Michael, you may have the skills to do it, but you really have to harmonize with the team of people that you're with. And um, sometimes that's not always the case, but I, I realized that that was really important to earn the trust of your supervisor, right? Like, mm -hmm. if, they, if they're giving you the ball and you got to carry it like right here, then just carry it right here. You don't need to <laughs> take every little thing personal and right. you know and all that stuff so right. i mean it was definitely a learning curve you know but yeah i just remember being like you know it you know peeping behind the curtain and seeing like it's not that you know glamorous it's basically hard work and if you can do it you can probably really move up you know so, yeah 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 you and just, just to add on to that real quick to touch on all, all you guys point um yep. like the network networking is 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 i found to be one of the best ways to stay employed because you know that person who who was a coordinator might turn into a producer one day oh, yeah. you know mm -hmm. and they're going to remember how you treated them right. um that that director will turn into executive producer and yep. you know they'll reach back they remember working with you and they'll reach they remember how hard you work and they'll reach back to you yeah. and, and say and give you opportunity you know yeah so yeah for sure um I mean, that's awesome, you guys. Um, uh, we don't have you guys for much longer. Do you guys mind if we get into Q&A? Sure. Let's okay. do it. Um, so, um, huh, w w do you guys have hard outs on like 7.30 or whatever? No. Uh, okay. Good. Um, so I will um, kind of start on the Q&A from questions that are uh, from Instagram. If you guys don't mind, um, but I mean, I'll, I'll kind of swing for the fences, but um, uh, for everybody, um, Wretched Parasite. Lovely. 
Love how you gotta <laughs> shout the names out. I love <laughs> it. I love it. It's like the Tonight Show. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that name. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. I, right to Parasite, I'm not making fun of your that username. It I, it took me off guard. Um, you had some great questions, um, Wretched Parasite. Um, and so he or she or they asks, um, in an industry that's predominantly white, what are your tips on not minimizing yourself and maintaining a platform as a person of color? Does anyone wow. want to chime in on that? That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. Um, and that's why I wanted to start out on that. Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Can I chime in? Yeah, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> of course. Well, for me, it's just like building a community of people around you who can support you and you can support them and everything that they're doing. Um, I think there's a statistic out there where, you know, if you took – BIPOC, like the the audience of BIPOCs that actually attend movies and go to the movie theaters, like we outrank that of like um, white Americans. And so I think that there's something to be said about like, you know, going and supporting the black director, even if you're not black, going and supporting the Asian director, Latino, Latinx director, even if you're not of that race, because when you're you're coming out in numbers that gives more support and more um i guess like sustainability to those projects so to me it's like you know i'm asian working on craig of the creek like that doesn't make any difference to me because i want this show to succeed and i want it to like grow and be as big as it can be um even if like i'm not necessarily um a black american um and you know, I've made a lot of friends on that show of all different nationalities. And like, I think they're amazing artists and they should be working on every show, you know, not just like a POC show, but like, um, I think it's all about like that and building a support network with the people around you so that you guys can build each other up. Right. Absolutely. That's right. Uh, uh, just to add on a little bit. Um, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. It's just um like like that support network for sure of like minded individuals. And to let your work speak for yourself. You know, fortunately for me, coming coming up as a story artist, I could let my work um do all the talking, you know, and that kind of levels the playing field. Um and so you just you're able to just like to be yourself. I I've always been myself i never minimalized myself um just i don't know if it because i just didn't care how people um <laughs> perceived me as or you know i'm a 90s hip-hop guy so i don't i don't hide anything like my hair my hair used to be this long so i there was no, you like you knew what it was when you met me so <laughs> i just kind of just i just made sure my artwork and my like my responsibilities was always taken care of and i always um, kept it like as professional as I can be because I know there w there would be these perceptions of me, but mm -hmm. I do like like showing and proving like when when people people see me and they expect this thing and then you know, you turn out to be you know a complete 180 of what they what they think you are you know what I'm saying and and you surprise them like that's like that's the best motivation and and that just kind of kept me going you know. I was. I just want to piggyback on that. I think one of the things is also, especially when I came into the business, um, that funny enough on Beavis we did have a few, um, you know, black people on there more than a few to be honest. For such a typically white show, we we had a pretty diverse, um, uh, you know, crew. But you know, one thing I did run into, and it wasn't even overt, but it was subtle, is that you're kind of kind of walking on eggshells because people don't expect you in that space. So when they don't expect you in that space, your faults can take on higher magnitude. Like they can be more um, pronounced, for example. Um, so I think the one thing, I think it's such a great question because 
sometimes you you can't be yourself because you want to be this superhuman, right? Like you want to be super artist or you want to stay late. You want to prove to them. Whereas like the next person over here can't even really draw and they're getting like, hey, you know, invited to the this or, you know, whatever. I've seen like all these kind of examples. And um, so I think what what's really important is one to to be yourself you know to be who you are you, you just just really be natural um i know right now though like the industry is so much different from when i started when it comes to that that we don't really those dynamics aren't really that pronounced anymore um but i know it was at, at a certain point you know it was really um important to kind of assert who you are like you know i you know i'm black right like because you're saying some fucked up shit and I'm, yeah i'm right here you know, I kind of, you know, and I've had situations where, you know, little quips here and there and, you know, and you kind of take it with a grin of, or whatever, like, hey, hey jokey, it's, 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 it's this and that. But I think at the same time, you don't want to um, just be, just be really into just being yourself, being natural, just yeah. being as, you know, your, your humanity will shine, your heart will shine, you mm -hmm. know, and all those things. Um, and you know i feel like if you just put that kind of effort and you really are diligent in your work you're going to earn the trust of people around you and if they have a problem with anything about your color your background or whatever that's on them you know that's really that's a, that's something that they have to really deal with um, yeah but i'm just so happy that when you guys are doing this like rise of animation is doing this and that the industry is just so much more pluralized right now especially at cartoon network so i gotta give a shout out to cartoon network the, the, the yeah. kind of the people there, the culture there, it's really yeah. from in my yeah, experience. Yeah, you make so you make some really, like really great points. I think that uh, like when you're when you're working on like trying to break into the industry, like just like just focus on like what you can control. Like like if you're so like like oh like this is predominantly white, I can, may not be able to break in. If you're like focused on that, then all your power is going there, not to like focusing in on yourself and where you're going. So now, like, I never, I never thought about any of that stuff. And then when I broke in and then, like, you hardly see, like, many, like, you hardly saw, like, many people of color. But then you look back and, like, oh, shoot, I guess there's not that many. But then now I'm here and now I can, like, be the motivation for others that can see me here where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But if, if, if I was, like, focused on, like, dang, like, there's, like, a lot of white people here and stuff like that, I would have been sidetracked, you know, like, I would have probably been, like, de demotivated, like, a lot of times because, like, maybe they don't want me there and stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, where are you gonna say, Frank? Oh no, I was I was just saying yeah. I was I was agreeing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, like Mark or Christine, um, do you guys have anything to add to that? Because I think, um, like, and, you know, simply for me, um, if if people can um, sort of see. Uh, uh, people of color or people that look like them, like being like storyboard artists or designers or showrunners or anything like that. I mean, that's so important. I mean, we take it we we take it for granted how, how important that is, but it's so important for everyone to see it. So, um, like for you, Mark and Christine, uh, just kind of like <clears throat> thriving at uh, 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 like Cartoon Network. Do you? Uh, what do you guys think about that? I mean, like, I, I don't want to put the pressure on you to represent, you know, like Black Americans or, you know, Asian Americans, that kind of thing. But um, do you have any thoughts on that? You want to go, Christine? Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, what, can you repeat that? <laughs> repeat that. I'm, I want to make sure I answer you correctly. Um, I think it would be like, what would you want to see, um, moving forward from, um, black Americans in animation? Okay. Yeah. Um, and where would you want to guide this up and coming artist generation? I think what you're saying was right on point as far as more representation in the higher levels, more, more management positions, more showrunners. Um, there's statistics that say when, when the showrunner is a person of color, they hire more people of color, you know, it's just kind of natural. Um, so, so things like that would definitely benefit 
um, the industry. And Cartoon Network is actually doing some really great things um, as far as um, trying to trying to be more inclusive. They're already very inclusive. Um, like I like just when I started there, I I noticed there was there is an atmosphere of um, of inclusion. Mm. So that that's already great. But like now, even taking steps forward to um, to to make that make sure that that is happening. Um, yeah, more showrunners, more show showrunners, more um, stories from from our perspective. Um, I think starting there and more like higher management too. You know, and I think if we start from there. Everything else would would kind of fall into place. Right. Mm-hmm. right. What do you think? Um, of- yeah, I mean, I totally agree with what Mark is saying, and I feel like you know that goes along with like bringing up and supporting people of color around you as well um but i also do feel like we're all filled with like intersectionalities you know and um i am glad to be working in an industry where it's okay to be queer and you know uh my girlfriend is uh immigrant from mexican uh, from mexico sorry and um i feel like this is an industry that is very accepting although like it doesn't necessarily fully reflect the spectrum of people that like it accepts right. um but i do feel like embracing your intersectionality is one way to truly like i don't think you should compromise giving up your voice of who you are and your identity and i think that's really what will set you apart and anyone struggling to get in like everyone can look online and see the same exact classes on storyboarding but what really differentiates you is who you are and sticking to your identity will truly get you in the door because they're looking for someone different um than what they're seeing and so i don't i think it's what kimson was saying of like don't uh don't i guess like um like get rid of parts of you to to try to fit in you know, like be yourself and everything that you are, whatever your minority is, whatever communities you're a part of, because that's like what, once those people start getting in and start getting waves and like getting into higher positions, then like we'll see a better representation overall, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, because if, if, if companies want to, you know, make, if they want to create stuff that's going to, you know, touch different people, then and then you, you need to make sure that you're you're hiring people that have those different perspectives. And I think that's 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 key what you guys are saying about um, you know not compromising yourself because you know I think I think that is ultimately what they want to see because you I mean they could they could hire anyone that can just technically do the job that is qualified on that level. But you know that's why it, I think that's why it is so competitive because there are a lot of people that are technically qualified but you know, it's like, but is that perspective something that's going to push our project or our studio or our, you know, whatever it is? And um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, well said, Frank. And uh, I, I think companies need to. I mean, you know how it is. Big companies they move slow, so <laughs> you can move fast. Oh yeah. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I did want to get to, if you guys don't mind, um, can you guys uh, go until 7.30? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to do a lightning round. Um, not really. Uh, but oh, just yeah. kind of like a- Is there a prize? Is there a prize at the end? <laughs> <laughs> There's the prize. Uh, we're gonna, all going to do shots of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that works for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, w- I really w- wanted to field uh, questions from ID. So um, if you guys don't mind, we'll open it up. So um, Cartoon Randy G says, what is, what is in your portfolio that you found got your first gig? Uh, what did you feel like you worked on, mastered, that gave you the edge that you needed to break into the industry? Anybody? Uh, uh, my my comic book was my portfolio. Um, yeah, because yeah. like I was saying earlier, um, and shouts to Carl Jones. He, he's definitely been an inspiration to me. 
but he saw my book and was like, I want to hire this guy, you know? Okay. And yeah. then I made a portfolio. <laughs> right. So it's just putting your work out there. Putting your work out there is super important mm -hmm. because, because uh, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of artists might not know that these studios, they, they are constantly scouring the internet for new talent and oh. different talent, you know? Oh. So oh. put your artwork out there. That's awesome, man. Uh, I think that's great. Um, yeah. And um, I think too, also like, just like, don't get sidetracked from like the fundamentals. I feel like just like, understanding perspective, figure drawing, and just like anatomy. I used to spend hours just like studying anatomy and filling up my sketchbook with like drawing different muscles and stuff. Yeah. And I helped out a lot with like, uh, cause like as a character, like when I was, especially when I was doing prop designs, I was called on a lot to do like help out in background design and also background painting. Mm -hmm. And learning like when I was like, even though I didn't have that much of that in my portfolio, Mm -hmm. I had to do the fundamentals of learning everything like color just like constantly taking classes and stuff like just staying yeah. like having all your skills like ready to go when you're called upon is like very key and just showcasing that in like your work yeah yeah, yeah. that makes sense man hey, ready, um, to get ready. <laughs> yeah. uh, for me it was like I think a big part of it is like draw what you want to work on in a sense like if you hate action and hate drawing uh vehicles maybe you don't want to work on transformers but like you know if you enjoy more like comedy or like heartfelt or whatever things like really show what your where your skill sets are and i'm not saying don't include any sort of action things you could maybe like show that you have the capability to do that but i think like you know trying to manifest where you want to work by like the work that you're creating and then again, like, don't lose your voice because a lot of what got me in wasn't, wasn't uh, school assignments. It was like the comics or boards that I was doing on the side for right. uh, pitches that I wanted to do or a comic series that I would love to make. And then that kind of gave the recruiters more of a sense of what my voice is. Right. And then that kind of like propelled me into getting a job. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you think, Kimson? Uh, well, I graduated with a short film. So when we, in college, we had to make short films and that was what got me my first job. Um, yeah. So our, I mean, I think that's the same for other animation schools too, but I think to what Mark said, or actually to what everybody said, whether you go to school for it or not, just put your art out there. I think most people who are hiring want to see what your voice is and that you have certain skills. But this, I think the voice sometimes trumps the skill. Um, I think if they can align their voice with yours, if they see something in, in what is it about you that they feel like gels with what they're working on, I think it's a, it's, it's a great match, you know? Um, That's awesome. So yeah, I think, again, just put your stuff out there. You don't have to come from, some of the best animators I've met since I moved to LA didn't even go to, to college for animation. And they're just like, amazing yeah they're like self-taught and there's like a whole crew actually throughout the world that are self-taught and i'm just like where was this when i started you know <laughs> but um but i feel like yeah if you want to work for you know a big studio your personal work is going to resonate a lot more with the recruiters as well as your skills but i wouldn't like tailor your like your portfolio only to what that is you know um, and you can always resubmit, even if you get a rejection, you can always resubmit again. Yeah. You know? um, <clears throat> this is a good one. Um, thank you, uh, Kinton. Um, so this is a good one. So uh, Passion, Tashman Dips, uh, Dems uh, says, uh, did you ever, did you guys ever struggle with uh, imposter syndrome uh, slash uh, self-doubt on your way to being animation professionals and then how did you um deal with it it's more a mental health um question uh, yeah i was just gonna say um i know sorry mark I, um, I'll go for it. I, I was gonna say that we we were talking about this before we went live but you know i really miss because of quarantine we're not around each other anymore and one of the things you know to be able to um just be able to talk to another artist like when you're at work even if it's for like five minutes to get over or work through either it's a work struggle or just even when you're not feeling 
you're not feeling good about your work or, or something like that, you know, it's, um, I just miss that, you know, because we're in quarantine. Mark was on the same floor as me and I would just pop in his office and just pop on the couch and just mm-hmm. nap. And then I'd be like, oh, it's like, it's like going to therapy or something, you know, <laughs> or like get back to work. But um, yeah, um, I feel like uh, I still wrestle with that. So it's kind of ongoing, you know. Um, it's always ongoing. <laughs> it's all, yeah, it's ongoing. So just a short answer is like, you know, it's always ongoing, even after 27 years in the business, you know, you're still kind of like, am I still, am I good enough? And, and you know, um, am I living up to what I set up for myself? Not necessarily right. what they're paying me for, but am I living up to what I set up? So, mm-hmm. um, anyway, so I didn't mean to hijack the answer. No, but no, you're absolutely right, though. I was just going to reiterate my point from earlier as as um when I was saying use that as fuel, you know, fuel, fuel your drive to get better, to learn. You know, I think the imposter syndrome is a human condition. You know, I mean, there's some people I mean, I know LeBron James can't be suffering from that. But, <laughs> you know, for the most for the most of us, you know, um <laughs> It's it's, oh. it's, it's, a, it's a human condition. Maybe he's not human, but it's a human condition, and and you know a lot of a lot of people struggle with that. So just use it as as a motive as a motivational tool, and just keep pushing. You know, because if you're working there, or if you're just working, like you you got into the animation business for a purpose. Like you belong there. You know. Um, so you're not an imposter and just but just use it as 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 fuel for sure yeah but um like with mark i i want to ask you too like how do you handle rejection i use that as like i put it i put the big chip on my shoulder and i'm like i'm gonna show them you mm-hmm. know and that just makes me go go back to the computer and just like draw my ass off you know um I just I I try to use everything as as fuel, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like keeping it keeping in mind like the the no's are just just as important as the yeses. Right. That's that's where that growth comes from. Yeah, um, it's just like I'll show them one day, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, remember, <laughs> I, I remember trying to drop off my reel at a company one time to freelance on a commercial, and the the secretary was like, oh, deliveries are in the back. <laughs> she, thought I was, she, thought I was, she thought I was the messenger. And I was like, uh, is that how, like, I must be dressed really bad or whatever. I remember like, wow, parents is, you know, it was, it was just one of those moments where I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> He literally was like, oh, no, 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 in the back. I was like, hey, I'm here to see some though. But uh, yeah, man, it's like all those little nicks and all that yeah. stuff. So like, oh, I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that, um, a thing that's kind of like, because I had like big imposter syndrome when I first got hired. I always felt like the producer was going to come into my cube and be like, hey, we didn't mean to hire you. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> that's how, like, I would like, uh, I think uh, Kimson was saying earlier how like we work harder because we think like it's going to be taken from us. So I think one thing that's helped me a lot <clears throat> getting over that is just like kind of like separating like who I am from like what I do. So like, mm-hmm. just like understand that you have like live your life, you know, like, you know, I'm married and I have two twin babies now. So my passion is in being a great husband, a great father, you know. So like, I feel like spending time with family and doing that stuff, like helps me kind of like mm-hmm. smooths over like the when I'm getting rejected. Mm-hmm. Like whenever like I turn in a pro- something that doesn't get approved and I have to keep working on it, then I come home and then like, you know, my kids jump on me and that's just kind of like, like, so like, you know, I'm not like so sad about it anymore, but just like, yeah. just, like live, just live your life, you know, like don't make like this everything, you know, don't become your, your job isn't who you are, you know, it's just like, you still do your stuff on the side, your art and all right. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, Can't Mike. take it too seriously. Yeah, that's great, Mike. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, I feel like I, I I feel like I would agree with everyone. Um, You know, a lot of it is having to find, and this is just like an ongoing thing. Like, I still feel a lot of imposter syndrome, and like even like in this room, I feel like an imposter. But it's 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 just like that feeling where you feel like you snuck in, you know. Um, But I feel like 
a lot of it comes from a, you got to work on yourself and your own self value and like understand that like you're working in these places and you're in these rooms because you have something to offer and people recognize that and so in some ways you kind of have to trust other people and trust yourself that you kind of know what you're doing um but like like uh, michael was saying like separating your work from yourself because at the end of the day like when you're working on a show it's a show creator's show mm -hmm. and so if it's not their vision it's nothing personal to you because art is like very subjective and so if something gets scrapped or a scene gets cut it's you know the nature of the business and you got to throw out your babies uh not your actual babies michael but you know, your, <laughs> your drawings and and you know continue to like have that value on yourself but i feel like it's not really like a like a like a specific answer i think it's a constant thing that humans have to work on yeah. and um like forever right yeah i think yeah christine you make a great point about like the productions like it's like like you know your voice is in your portfolio and your personal work but once you get into the production job you got to get in line and it's yeah. like it's a whole team job so it's like an assembly line of like things so you're not like putting out your own like you're not getting into an industry to make, unless you're a creator you're not putting out your own mm -hmm. stories if, especially if you're doing design you're kind of just like falling in line and like being part of like a team like it's like a team sport you know so mm -hmm. yeah. that in mind yeah can I also add sorry yes, of course. Uh, a lot of people don't know this but when you take tests you can email and ask for feedback and not everyone will, will respond but the one response or two responses that you get will help you grow into a better artist and better your testing and better your portfolio and so I really encourage everyone to like reach out because even though it's very small and like I don't know, it seems very exclusive. People are very nice in animation. And I feel like if you approach them nicely, people will try to give you the time to like give you feedback. What was your experience with that uh, on the first time uh, thing, uh, Christine? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> no, it's cool. Um, I took a lot of tests when I was unemployed. And as sad as that was, it gave me motivation. Like, okay, I'm getting tests. So something is working but not entirely um and i would like overwork myself and i would do too much on tests and like they would ask for 40 panels and i'd be like okay so you want 200 panels right that's what you meant <laughs> but, like, um so it took a lot of learning of like slowing down and like i um tested for uh, south park and like got in touch with the people there and like it's a very hectic schedule that they have and like they gave me a lot of feedback on how to draw faster and how to do things like more efficiently and so um like in general testing gives you experience and like knowing what a work day looks like for a storyboard artist but like getting that feedback and being able to improve yourself is something that's like very invaluable i feel and not a lot of people know about like because they're too nervous to reach out but reach out like if you can where do you stand on the like free test Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I feel like it should be paid. <laughs> Delicate topic. No, no, I, I, I think testing should be paid or it should just be freelance, personally. And that's because a lot of people, especially marginalized people, take time off of work to do testing. And if no one knows, if someone doesn't know what testing is, it's like um, they, they give you a like, prompt to do art for like a show or whatever to see if you can work on that show in the style of the show. Um, so I feel like if people are, people are always gonna go above and beyond and you can't control what people are gonna do. But what the companies can control is like the amount of testing and paying for tests. And so that's why I'm very like for paid testing. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I think unpaid testing right now is um, unpaid testing right now in our industry is kind of bullshit. So um, <laughs> we can probably set that bar. Um, well, right? Right? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't done tests sure. in a long time, but like, I think unpaid testing is bullshit now. So we can just kind of probably say that. Um, but um, I think um, 
<laughs> what is everybody else saying? Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'll kind of go through until like 7.30 for you guys. Um, and thank you guys for uh, making the time. So um, Cartoon Randy G says, uh, what is it in your portfolio that you found got your first gig? You, you asked that one already, Bobby. Did you ask oh, did one? I? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, where are we now? Do you guys have this thing? Uh, yeah. Um, I usually try to amplify them. Um, Pull from the... Uh... Where do we go down to? Il Isabella sketches? Um, how, what about this one, guys? Um, was there anything in particular that stumped you when you first got started in trying to um, uh, like pursue animation? Stumped you. Um, for me personally, it was it was a lot of terms that I, that I didn't understand, which made me go get the books and stuff, um, mm -hmm. and just basically like knowing how like knowing how a like a storyboard flows like just and this is real technical mm -hmm. but just like screen direction and hookups and things like that i like i remember getting notes with um hu on it and i'm like what what does he mean by this i don't know what this <laughs> means and then you know and i didn't i didn't i should have just went and asked him but I, you know i felt like i should i should have known this by now um mm -hmm. And then I, I eventually I asked one of my, um, you know, my, my board friends and, uh, you know, they told me what it was and, you know, yeah. just, just breaking down the, the knowledge of like the technicalities of how a board works was, was kind of uh, challenging for me in the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. The, the technicalities of it. Um, I get, there's a question here from the chat. I don't know if you want to bounce. Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it, Rick. Yeah, there, there is one. I was I was scrolling to see. Uh, there is one. Um, uh, since you uh, since you guys mentioned um, uh, self-taught artists, there's someone. Uh, Julian Hobbs says, "How does someone who's self-taught, never went to art school, uh, put stuff in a resume if they've never worked at a studio before?" I guess the other the other. Uh, the, the another version of that question could be, I guess, um, uh, reels too, or, or um, yeah. I mean, you don't you don't necessarily need to have worked in a studio before, um, but if you've done any art projects, you know, put those on there. Um, you know, even even like if, if you've done logos or flyers or any anything anything that you get paid for. Um, and if you haven't got, gotten paid for it, then, you know, your work, your work, they will look at your work before, um, your resume, I believe. Um, if your work is outshining your, your experience, then they will take that into consideration for sure. I know some, they try to sure. deter you, it seems, by saying like, you know, uh, three to five years experience yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Before. Oh, yeah. So, so it's like, do those, do, would you yeah. encourage them to still apply anyway, even if they don't meet, you know, the requirements just to, especially if, like you said, if they, if they, if they actually, if they look at it and then you're like, Oh, wait a minute, they didn't have the experience. But, right. You know. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would say ignore the prompt and just send, <laughs> and, you yeah. know, you just never know. I think it goes back to that whole drive like what you know how kind of how bad you want it but you know obviously not to the, the negative point but you do have to you know push yourself to not be like so literal with what they're looking for necessarily just but if you yeah. have stuff to share just share it and who knows yeah. you never know what kind of what kind of response you can get you know right because it might not be good for that i'm sorry but it might not be good for that particular project but they might have some down the line. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they could refer you to somebody else. Hey, we yeah. Can, I mean, there's, they just, just send it in. Just send yeah. It in. And also, like, maybe, like, if I try volunteering that, like, you know, there's like CTN and mm -hmm. places like that, you could put that on your portfolio too. And sure. it's also a great way to meet people. Or 
Yeah. Or like look at like like uh like art studios like that have art galleries. You could like I don't know like a volunteer there. If you have an art art gallery that you had your artwork, you could put that on your resume too. Yeah. First Going off of what? Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay. I was just going to say, I, I totally agree with my Michael of like volunteering, but also like if you're uh, taking online courses or going to like the summer speaker series for Nick or Cartoon Network or Disney, you know, like just throw that on there. And in terms of like trying to get into production, you can really spin anything to sound good in production. Like uh, <laughs> if you worked, if you worked at Starbucks, like I never could. So um, <laughs> you like you're great at working with people. You understand multitasking and like a uh, production schedule or, or whatever, you know, like try to spin it, try, try to learn what they're looking for and then spin what you're trying to do into like what they're looking for. Because I feel like any job can be applied at least into production for sure. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. That's awesome. Actually, I was going to say one of the, this guy that started work on, on production um, at MTV wanted to be an artist and there was such a big wall between them and he really busted his ass and then he ended up becoming a layout artist on Divas. Oh, wow. And he was the supervising animation director on Steven Universe. I mean, this is flash forward 25 years later, you know? But what I'm saying is like, any way you can get in, he was working at a record store before that, you know? He's, he's, you know, he's a great friend of mine. And, We've, you know, we've known each other for years, but that journey in of itself, you know, he, he jumped so many walls to get to where he is now, where he's, you know, industry veteran, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, any way you can get in, just try and get in. Don't, don't let them, you know, the gate be the, the only, the only way to, to get in. Hop the gate, go yeah. around the back, you know? Shovel, <laughs> yeah. Shovel, yeah. Shovel, yeah. Yeah. Brick. <laughs> 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 yeah. Were, were there um, any other questions on IG, Bobby, or I can pull another up in the chat too? Uh, can I add to that while you guys are looking? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm seeing a lot of stuff of like, well, you, I'm not in LA and stuff, but you know, especially with uh, the quarantine, everything's online. But I would really highly recommend people to join like animation organizations like Women in Animation. Um, like uh, Lexia, Latinx in animation, you know, um, black, in, uh, black women in animation. Like there's so many places that are giving like support and org communities for people and like, and black and animated. But uh, like I said, um, for me, my peers were like my biggest asset getting in. And it wasn't necessarily like meeting a director or supervisor that might forget me the next day because they have so much on their plate. but like knowing all the other revisionists at the studio or the assistants at the studio and like we're all kind of rising up together and so like who know like um i think mark was saying like who knows who's going to get you your next gig so like joining those organizations and rise up has been an amazing resource yeah. of like meeting each other and like um that's pretty much how i got my foot in the door you know uh-huh right Right. By the way, are you guys sponsored by anybody, or is it just like sponsored by Frank and Bobby? Oh, it's just us. Um, <laughs> we're not sponsored by anybody. We're not tied to like any like studio. We're just kind of doing it. That's awesome. Uh, but the uh, studios reach out to us and want a partnership, so that's great. That's awesome. Um, but uh, um, also, can I just can I just add this re really quick? Yeah. Um, and there's also all types of um, positions in animation that don't require being an artist. So if you want to be, uh, you want to go into the, the animation industry, right. there's um, the production side of it, mm -hmm. which is the coordinators and the, you know the, the line producers, managers. Like there's a whole other side of animation that 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 makes it run really smooth. So in a, a, a lot of the times, people <laughs> go in from from production. And they will make their way into the into the arts. So that's enough. That's the back door way yeah. to get in there. <laughs> that's true, yeah. man. That's so true. They have some crazy paths. I think I, I remember. I remember one guy. Um, yeah, there was there was one guy at DreamWorks who um, he he worked in, in facilities, you know. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and then became production supervisor, and then 
there was uh, one of our animators when I was at Pixar, he was, uh, he was a police officer, came in as security. And then, but, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like when you, you, you know, you, you yeah. find your, you find your, find your path eventually. It doesn't have to, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be something that's like, you know, yeah. uh, you found it when you were, when you were a kid or, yeah. right. you know, even though there's a lot of those, you know, stories of those of us in that, in that boat, you know, there's some, some people find it later. And, yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. never too late. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, in terms of art, oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, okay. I, I don't want to talk about um, it. In terms of art, like, I feel like every studio, or at least the major ones, are really trying to push, like, trainee programs and kind of, like, helping people get over that hurdle of, like, I'm testing, but I'm not getting there. Like, what? I need a little, like, push to get in. And I was in the Storyboard Academy at Cartoon Network, and I I learned so much from it and made so many connections. but. Um, uh, I think I'm not sure about Netflix, but some of them like you have to be like uh, within three years of graduating. But the Cartoon Network one was like for anybody, and I think it really like opens up a lot of opportunity for artists yeah. to kind of like get over that hurdle. And yeah. I think last the last year that we had one of the trainees was a international student. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it's a really cool opportunity to like apply to these trainee programs. I know Disney has one. Nick yep. has one. Netflix is opening up theirs remotely right now. So like for sure, like apply to those things. Yep. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but uh, maybe one, one last one since it's 730. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, there's there's some in the chat. I don't know if there's if, if there was any other in on IG that you want to grab? Oh, uh, I think one, unless we already touched on this, um, but uh, what would you guys like to see in animation? Um, um, like, what would you want to see more of um, in terms of like cultural representation, job environment wise, um, and just sort of like general working, like in industry wise, what do you guys think? So let's start with, um, yeah, that was the big question. <laughs> big question. So what would you guys like to see? What would, you, what would you guys like to see in terms of content more in terms of like representation, diversity, and inclusion? Let's start with that. Number one. Um, one thing that I, I was having this conversation with a friend the other, the other day about like the shows that we grew up watching of like uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Boy <laughs> Meets World. I, Family matters. I was like, man, what was it about those? And I think like from where, like how, where I came from, I always looked on shows for like, they had like family structures. Like, I think being a new father, I want to see like, cause like when I put on cartoons for my kids and I'm like watching them, I'm like, oh, they're making the dad look a little like suspect here. Like he can't, <laughs> put on his, he doesn't know his left from his right foot. But I think it's like, uh, I, would, I think our show on Summer Camp Island, we do a great job of like, We've had some great shows with like Oscar and his dad. And then like we have some shows coming up with like the characters and their mothers. But just seeing like those like family dynamics, I think mm -hmm. that, that I used to love watching those like shows as a kid, like to know that they had like like strong family values in them. But I think I would like to see more stuff. Cool. Like yeah. Great. They would hit on some they would hit on some real stuff too. Yeah. Awesome. You you get you get the comedy stuff, but then you have some of those episodes on family matters. And yeah, Fresh Prince, where you, you yeah. know, talking about gun violence or awesome. drugs or like yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah and the, yeah. the those shows aren't like out like that anymore. So I think there's more cartoons more than like TV shows like that. So I think there's like room for like yeah. cartoons to kind of like push into those agendas a little bit. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, uh, Kim Zane, Mark, Christine? Of uh, uh, <clears throat> would you like to see more? I'm more, I get more excitement out of adult, uh, like sitcom cartoons more than the kid stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I do love the kid stuff that, that, um, that, uh, tackles like heavier issues because you can, you can kind of cover it in, in ways and kind of get the point across, um, in a, in a more metaphorical way, I think. Um, sometimes you have to read into it, but, um, uh, I definitely think that I'd like to see a lot more just leads of color. I remember pitching a show, a short to, to Nickelodeon years ago, and the lead character was a little brown boy, 
kind of what I looked like when I was a kid. And I remember a lady asked me like, well, why, why, why a boy? And I was just like, well, I don't know if that's like the standard, you know, development question to ask, you know, ask. And I, I was, maybe I was just like super alert to the, the race, like, you know, vibe that was going on from her. Um, and I, you know, I was like, well, did she want it to be like a dog or should it be an animal? I was like, well, no, I want to see myself in the cartoon. Like when I was growing up, I wanted to see myself represented, you know? Yeah, man. I feel like, I feel like the more that we have content, whether it's kids or adults, that reflects the people who watch it, then I think we're, we're moving ahead. And also, of course, animation, for the longest time, it was like, why do animation uh, of real people when you can make it a dragon, right? But what happened was that these these fantastical creatures or animals get coded with all this like kind of mainstream culture stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So the, even even the the some of these animals become um, stereotypes of what every everybody in society is already assuming. Mm -hmm. So I like more human, you know, kind of characters. Um, but if we're gonna do some animals, like let's just let's just be real plural about everybody. You know, um, so that's that's what I really want to look forward to is more just more leads of color in the prime like story agency you know, position. Yeah, um, so that's just and my I agree, I agree, I agree a thousand percent. Um, man, what do you think, Mark? Um, I would like to see more. Well, I would like to see two things happen. I would like to see more um more cartoons with more cultural influence like um victor valentino does a great job of that of incorporating um aztec culture into into um into the story really um and also uh more adult animation like as far as like um i would like america to take adult animation like how anime does it you know um i would like to see the combination of that come together yeah, yeah. you know yeah. um yeah. Well, i think that would be really dope you we're know? so behind yeah we're so, <laughs> behind. We're so <laughs> behind mark what would be your ideal show and pitch do you think <laughs> I already have it. It's called Blockheads. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yo. Give it away for free on here. Stop no, 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 Get out of here. Just. <laughs> 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 It'll be like, right, what's happening? Yeah. Great. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, what do you, what do you Steve, want what to be? What, oh. Mark, if you don't mind me asking, like, what do you want to accomplish for, like, Blockheads in terms of? Um, like storytelling, like aspects and that kind of stuff. Oh, I, I would like to touch like some of the things that I was, that I was just speaking on as far as yep. a lot of the cu cultural in influences. And also like, you know, now is a different time because, you know, things like Spider-Verse and Black Panther kind of opened the doors, but just seeing us in, in, in a heroic, um, in a, a heroic role. And because a lot, one of the problems that we have, and I'm gonna keep this really quick, is that there's a, a a miseducation about the black experience, you know, and that that brought us. That's that is why we're here now because so many like media has the biggest influence as far as um you know like prejudices and stereotypes and all that stuff. Like the media created that that stuff, you know, and it perpetuates it, and we need to change that. And the only way to really change that is to is education, you know, like the pro the police brutality is really just a symptom of like the overall like sickness that that is going on in this country, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I didn't mean to get get. No, 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 no. And then at the, no, because we're at we're uh, at the Mark, end of the Mark, Mark, please continue. So, um, <laughs> what do you? What are your ambitions for the show? Or ambitions it's just to for? it's to show the show us in 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 a in a different light and and um just like incorporating the american story as it relates to our experience yeah. incorporating hip-hop because hip-hop is a powerful art form for good and for bad you know and um basically that and, and 
and the words have magic, you know? So just like teaching the lesson and entertaining the people, you know, um, is, 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 is our goal. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Man. Yeah, that's great. But I, I didn't mean to take all the time, Christine, sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> um, I guess like for me, it's just like, I just want the studios and the shows to be reflective of what the actual world looks like, you know? Like, if I think if you took the average person in the world, it would be like a 55-year-old Han Chinese woman. <laughs> and um, I don't see that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But like, um, I think that the world is more diverse than what is in media. And, I, and it's not only just like showcasing more diverse faces, but like, it being like created and ran by and done by diverse people and um i think that like there's a certain kind of like um there's a certain like perspective that's get that gets shown whenever there's like um brown people on tv and it's definitely from a perspective of like well i'm trying my best even though i don't understand you and i think i would prefer to see more diverse characters where it's like this is where I come from and this is how my life is and you can't fix it but you can like help you know and I feel like that kind of representation is important to me as well um, because you know I was the yellow ranger forever because that was the Asian female character and so like um, that's the only person I could identify with but I could also identify with like any type of like brown person that was on screen at all you know just because like that is who I can relate to um but I feel like there needs to be more of that and I don't think that this will be completely there until we can stop having these conversations and it's just like the norm you know like I don't want to keep talking about like how can we make this diverse I just want it to be diverse and then we don't have to talk about it anymore like um there doesn't have to be a quota met or like a percentage met, it's just like, this is what the world looks like, you know? Right, right. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I, th I think we have a long way to go. Um, honestly, Christine, um, and for all sure. I can there. Um, I think um, with, um, with everything of like uh, Latinx voices and Black American voices and uh, Asian American voices. I think we have a long way to go, but um, you know, that's why we're doing this, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, but I, I think, uh, what are you gonna say, Mark? Or somebody was gonna say? Oh, no, I was just, I was agreeing with you. I was agreeing. I, I think this is a long way to go. I mean, like, uh, um, uh, the, the best thing we can keep doing is just sort of pushing our, like, stories out there. Um, and, uh, and, uh, to be honest, I mean, the Latinx community and the Black American community is opening up so many different, um, channels for all of us. Um, it, they, they really are, you know, and, uh. I think I think us Asian American voices are a little bit behind in the thing, but um, I think that Latinx uh, voices and uh, Black American voices are are just sort of like laying the groundwork and then sort of like upholding this, you know, just sort of like you know infrastructure and then like thriving, and then you guys can come through, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh and uh they're supportive of us uh but uh they're, you know they're doing it so i think i think like as long as we you know there are allies i you know i think uh i think we'll eventually get there you know mm -hmm. to a place you know where they are so but uh yeah awesome uh michael mark um yeah, it's like 7.44. Thank oh. you, guys. Uh, it's probably the longest yeah. one you've yeah. ever done. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like 7.44. Uh, we started yeah. at 6. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, making time for us. Um, 
We really appreciate your time. And you. um, it was good to talk to you guys and just kind of talk through this stuff, man. Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Talk Hollywood, man. <laughs> just kidding. Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood, I, man. I, and let, let, let me just thank you guys for reaching out. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Right, Frank, yeah. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you guys for reaching out. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you guys putting together this platform, for sure. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, and if party. there's anything, uh, uh, last thing you guys want to say, oh, Frank, uh, peace okay. out. Um, but um, really, guys, thank you guys so much for, like, making the time. Um, this was insightful and uh, just sort of, it's great to meet you guys, like, virtually. Yeah. And just... Yes kind of talk like these kind of uh, talk shop about the animation industry, but also kind of like um, cultural stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And that was cool too. Um, Great, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, we, we gotta talk about this stuff guys, right? Always. Absolutely. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I didn't realize it. But uh, uh, yeah. We gotta talk about this stuff. We have to. We have to. Yeah, it's gonna change. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole. Yeah. That's the whole uh, notion behind like Rise Up Animation and like inviting guys on. Um, Jesse Juwano, uh, uh sort of reached out to you guys because you guys were like VIPOC um, and whatever that can do to encourage uh, people that were. Um, BIPOC on um, just sort of like up and coming artists. Um, and then, you know, honestly, guys, like anytime, anytime someone, uh, some artists um, like comes through and just see someone that looks like us, um, honestly, uh, I, I know it, it's not trivial, um, but anytime someone looks like us and um, made it into the animation industry, was an artist, liked to draw like they did when they were a kid and made it into the animation industry and are thriving. Right. Uh, they, um, they are encouraged. So that's the whole, you know, sort of the whole thing behind these sort of panels, you know, are just kind of like people that look like us, man. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, that's great. You know, so, uh, Thank you guys for uh, doing this thing. Um, I know you guys have like a million, a million <laughs> like panels like upcoming in the weeks, uh, like for Cartoon Network. But uh, thank you guys. Uh, it, was, it was a pleasure to meet you guys, um, Kim Zin, Michael, Mark, and Christine. It's great to meet you guys. We really yeah. appreciate your time, and that was really fun. Um, I think we really made an impact on you know, um, whoever kind of came to this um, uh, panel. So thank you guys. Thank you. Man. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. All right. Yeah. See you guys. See you guys. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Boom. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. Yo. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you, See guys. you guys. All right, bye. All right. Yeah. Peace.